It's not terribly surprising that some of the best movies of all time are based off some of the best books of all time. So today I'm gonna stop and give you my top 10 favorite movies that are based off of books. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your favorite movies that are based off of books. My list is not the right list. It's not the comprehensive list. It's just my list and I would love to see yours. One more thing before we get started. This video is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook of your choice for signing up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean. Chandler. We're talking about some of the best movies based off some of the best books, and you can get one of them for free at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. I am a massive fan of Audible. I'm listening to books all of the time. Right now, I'm listening to Ready Player One in anticipation for Ready Player Two, which comes out later this month. And let's get started. Kicking things off is the Lord of the Rings trilogy based off the Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. Eh, on this one, I cheated a little bit since it's three movies based off of three different books, but whatever. What I think makes these movies so special is that the studio and the financiers actually trusted the filmmaker to make the trilogy beforehand. Excellent! They didn't wait to see how the first one did and then just, no, beforehand, they trusted Peter Jackson to set out with a big, gigantic plan to shoot these three epic movies. And so they shot them back to back to back, released them one year after the other until the whole thing was out and they didn't try and micromanage the thing to death and they designed it as a love letter to the fans. So much so that for each of the movies, they shot an excessive amount of extra footage that was material from the books that of course has been released as on the DVDs and Blu-rays as the extended cuts, but they allowed Peter Jackson to actually translate this material and trusted it. They didn't try and reinterpret it. They didn't try and put a 21st century spin on it. They went, People love these books. Let's trust this guy with a lot of money and a bunch of years to bring it to the big screen. And obviously, these have been beloved films. They won a bunch of Oscars, especially Return of the King that just kind of cleaned up the year that it was nominated. And I've said it many times before, I'm not as rabid of a fan of Lord of the Rings as many of you are. It's not like a top five franchise or set of movies for me, but that doesn't change the fact that I do enjoy them and I do think they're incredibly well made. Number nine, How to Train Your Dragon based off the book series by Cressida Cowell. Now this is a trilogy of animated films that just hit all the right notes. The animation is gorgeous, the score is phenomenal, and they tell these exciting escapist adventures about a kid that trains his dragon and battles all sorts of other creatures out there, whether the monsters are literal monsters or people that are monsters. It has all the escapism and adventure, but also the movies have a ton of heart. They capture kind of these family dynamics, the emotions we go through, the awkward relationships we have with our friends, with the opposite sex, with our parents. It captures all of that. And throughout the trilogy, we see this character hiccup grow up and form into a leader. Next up is Casino Royale based off the very first James Bond book from Ian Fleming. This is a fun one because it's actually been translated into the live action form multiple times. First in 1954 as an episode of the show Climax, then in the 1960s as a spoof of James Bond, and then of course, Daniel Craig's reboot of the James Bond franchise, his first film. And people ask me all the time, what's my very favorite James Bond movie? It is Casino Royale. This is everything I love about Bond movies. It has fantastic action, memorable action sequences. It even finds a way to make a game of Texas Hold'em really thrilling and exciting. You got a great villain in Le Chief, and this was my introduction to Mads Mikkelsen, just 
All in all, a great, great Bond film. Number seven, Forrest Gump, based off the Winston Groom book, Forrest Gump. This one was an important one for me because it was the very first time that I saw a Oscar winner in the theater before it won the Oscar. So the first time in kind of those formative years for me that I cared about a serious dramatic film. And this was just such an iconic film at the time that everybody quoted constantly and rewatching it just a couple months ago, it really does hold up. It's such an emotional film that constantly sets up these hurdles that Forrest must overcome, leading to these incredible moments of victory, followed by great moments of sadness. Uh, Rewatching it, man, it, it really does work. The author did write a follow-up book called Gump and Co., and for years there were talks and discussions of adapting it into a movie, but Obviously, that never came to be. Then we have First Blood, based off David Morrell's 1972 novel, First Blood. And if you aren't aware, this is the first film in the Rambo series. This is an interesting one because the book was written as the Vietnam War was winding down and the movie came out 10 years after the war had ended, and therefore there's a very different vibe in the way that each of them tackle essentially the very same story, and especially as you get to the end of the book versus the end of the movie, they go to a very different place and communicate a very different message, and I think a lot of that just has to do with when each of them was received and how much cultural culture shifted over that 10-year time period. A fun detail about the Rambo book series is that David Morrell had put in his contracts that he's the only person that can write books based off the John Rambo character and based off of kind of where the book ends. It's really difficult to write a sequel, but Sylvester Stallone wanted to make sequels and therefore when they needed to make a book adaptation of the second and third films, the only person that could write them was David Morrell. And so basically they had to talk him into adapting them so that he could get a big payday. And so there it's this very strange history of where the novelization of the second and third Rambo books comes from. And they're very different takes on the story of those movies. In fifth place is The Godfather, based Based off Mario Puzo's The Godfather. Now, this film is one of the most iconic mobster films of all time that has absolutely stood the test of time because it's a perfect example of craftsmanship, a deliberately paced story with complexity and layers to it, but it unravels its story at just the right pace that you can follow everything that's happening. And as details happen, you think maybe something should happen. It wasn't a mistake. You remember that. So then when it does pay off later on in the film, it's so satisfying. It's this amazing character study as you watch a good man and a war hero slowly descend into becoming the person that he said that he would never be. It's an amazing epic tale that spans years and does everything right. Number four, The Shawshank Redemption, based off the Stephen King novella, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption from the 1982 collection, Different Seasons. This is an interesting one because the original novella isn't one of Stephen King's more famous works. When the movie first came out, it didn't really do great at the box office, but it's a film that in the internet era, the fans spoke and they're the ones that kind of rose this film to prominence and earned its reputation as one of the greatest films of all time. And much like Forrest Gump, it's a movie that constantly puts barriers in front of our protagonist, obstacles in this dire situation and immediately pays them off with these incredible moments of victory that are followed by large amounts of sadness. But unlike Forrest Gump, which is meant to be viewed and interpreted in a fairly straightforward fashion, one of the cool things about Shawshank Redemption is you're constantly looking back at what happened before and reinterpreting it. The movie keeps giving us new information, which reveals things about the characters, their motivation, and what was really going on behind the scenes in the film. So it rewards multiple viewings in an incredible way, and it's one that just is so uplifting while at the same time dwelling in a lot of sadness. Real quick before we go into my top three, remember to share your picks down below in the comment section. My list is not the right list. I didn't forget to include anything. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. 
Also, there is a companion video to this over on my Patreon page with 10 more of my favorite movies based off of books. So if something wasn't included on this list, it might be included on that list. Join at any level and you can unlock that video in so many other exclusives. In third place is Jaws based off Peter Benchley's novel, Jaws. Now this wasn't Steven Spielberg's first film, but this is the one that exploded and launched him to the A-list as when it came out, it became the highest grossing film of all time and essentially was the film responsible for creating what is currently known as the blockbuster. What this movie does so well that so many creature features and shark movies have failed at is having characters that you really care about that behave in a manner that that makes sense. You have a city whose economy is based off of tourism. The idea of a shark would crush their economy, so there's tension and conflict built into that idea. You have the sheriff who's responsible for trying to save lives, trying to make the right decision. And then as you kind of go into the second half of the film and they're tracking down the shark, what it does is it gives you these three different personalities that are wildly different. Brody's kind of boring. Hooper is intelligent, but he's not used to kind of being out in the field. And then you have Quint, who is kind of a nut job and way overconfident. And the dynamic between them is so interesting and compelling as you see how they react differently to all of this. And as they start to have conversations, you realize behind all the bravado are real people. The characters are compelling. The thrills are real. It's just one of the greatest movies of all time. Our runner up is Jurassic Park based off Michael Crichton's 1990 book, Jurassic Park. Now, this is a great example of where the movie and the book complement each other really well. Both of them are excellent at what they're going for. Now, some people might say, well, the movie's not quite as detailed as the book and they left out certain subplots. That's all true, but the movie captures the experience perfectly by having this fantastic set of characters that each interpret this park through a different worldview and lens and respond differently. They're all interesting in their own ways. And it's a movie that you forget that the actual dinosaur carnage doesn't start until you're halfway through the movie. And when it does happen, it is classic, classic. Steven Spielberg escapism. And when it's not that, the characters are compelling and funny. And when you're just staring at dinosaurs, it's astounding to see them come to life with John Williams' music behind it. But the book is also a fantastic thriller that does what books can do better than movies, which is communicate large amounts of information and go into the science and the backstory and kind of flesh everything out. So if you love the movie, I definitely recommend checking out the book. It's a great example of two things that are very similar, but also very different in the right way. But my favorite movie based off of a book is Die Hard. Die Hard is actually based off the 1978 novel Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. This is a follow-up to the book The Detective. Both books follow the character Joe Leland, who in Die Hard would be renamed to John McClane, of course. Now here's where things get interesting. The Detective, the first novel, was adapted into a film back in 1968 with Frank Sinatra. No way. So in some odd sense, there's another Die Hard movie out there that stars Frank Sinatra. This one's fascinating to me because Die Hard has gone on to be regarded as one of, if not the greatest action movies of all time, but the book it's based off of is essentially just a footnote in the history of Die Hard now. It's not a book that people really discuss all that often outside of the context of the movie Die Hard. But as for the movie Die Hard, it's the perfect action movie from beginning to end. Everything is set up perfectly in the first act, paid off so well in the third act. The characters are fun. The action is vibrant and dynamic. You care about what's happening. All of it feels earned. And uh, therefore, it's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. And it happens to be based off of a book that I hope to read next year. So it comes in 
at number one. Remember, you can get a free audio book at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler, or you can get the companion to this video with 10 more of my favorite movies based off of books by joining over on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.